takes a deep breath. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Kidderminster Town Station for this special event today. As we all know, we're here to relaunch the Seven Valley Railway's flagship locomotive, 4930 Hagley Hall. However, before that, today is also a very sad day for our nation. Following the announcement yesterday evening that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II had died. So before we proceed with the plans that have been put together and developed for today, I'd like to introduce Prebendary Mike Neen. Mike is a member of the railway, has been with us for a long time, is a recently retired rector of Lempster Priory and has, as I say, a long association with the railway. I'd like to ask Mike to offer us some words and leave a few minutes of silence for us all to reflect on the momentous events that will no doubt take place in the days and weeks ahead. Mike. Thank you, Mike. In a moment, other speeches and indeed the blessing of this loco. But now, for the moment, the Queen in our minds, and I invite you to keep a few moments of silence as we remember Her Late Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. We keep silence together. Merciful God, be close to all who mourn, and we remember, especially at this time, all members of the royal family and all those grieving across the Commonwealth. May they know the hope of your promises and the comfort of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well known words. Support us, O Lord, all the day long of this troublous life, until the shades lengthen and the evening comes. The busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God save the King. God save the King. Mike, thank you so much for that. Um, I'm sure everyone is very appreciative to have those words of comfort to live, live, given to us at the start of today. So, some introductions I'd like to do now. For those of you who don't know me, and as many of you that I don't know, my name is Mike Ball. I'm the chairman of the Seven Valley Railway Holdings Company. Uh, that's the company that actually owns the locomotive, uh, apart from all the other support that is given to it. Um, and we have the custody of that and have to look after it, or we, we certainly do now. I'm going to be joined today by Colm Howe, who's just with us at the front of the platform. Colm is um, one of the founding members of the Seven Valley Railway, and he'll be sharing some words of remembrance and some words of wisdom, no doubt. Uh, I never listen to Colin without getting any words of wisdom, some of which are really appropriate and welcome, and some 
perhaps not quite as uh, welcome as they sometimes might be. I'm also going to be joined by Keith Hall, uh, who's a significant uh, member of the Friends of Hagley Hall group and has worked with us for a long time. Paul Hobson, he's the chairman of the uh, Friends group, who will have something more to say in a little, time, little while, uh, and will lead the uh, unveiling of the locomotive in a few moments' time. For our railway, today is very special. It's a day that many, many people have waited a very long time to see. We'll hear from some of those most closely involved with the locomotive over the years and witness the unveiling of the locomotive's nameplate. Then the first passenger service will be taking place on a return trip to Bridge North. What an amazing sight it will be. After the conclusion of the ceremony, the loco will be hauling us a full set of Great Western coaches on the railway, and I think we can all agree that this is going to be really something to behold. I know there are many photographers out there along the line determined to capture that perfect image on this very important day. There's no escaping from the fact that the overhaul of the loco has been a combination of hard work, determination, and overcoming one challenge after another. I think we'll probably hear more about that or about those changes from my fellow speakers today. But the truth is, somehow those challenges were overcome. The overhaul of Hagley Hall has been truly the stuff of dreams. Many people here today shared that dream. They had the vision, they had the grit to carry on with a project they cared passionately about. And it's thanks to them that we're here today to celebrate 4930's return to steam. Hundreds, if not thousands of people have been involved over the course of 36 years. 36 years, it's hard to believe, but that's how long since Hagley Hall last worked a passenger train. And just like for many of you, it's a special occasion. And it is for me too, because I joined the railway 36 years ago. And, and, and that's a lifetime for me doing all the things as it is for many of you. And uh, it, it really brings it home to you how long it's taken to bring it back into traffic. I want to say some thank yous to those who bought shares in 2012. Remember the picture on the front of the, of the document that we put out there? The donations that, was, that, that bought shares to support the project. We want, I want to thank and acknowledge those of you who have made donations to the SVR Charitable Trust. I want to make uh, an acknowledgement to the National Lottery Heritage Fund who left, who made a significant grant back in 2014 which really spurred on the movement to complete the overhaul of the locomotive. And also to thank you, the friends of Hagley Hall. They've kept the dream alive uh, over many, many years, tirelessly, he said, and lost his page, championing the project since the group was formed in 1999. They also have raised substantial funds to support the overall. And finally, so that I don't leave anybody out, thank you to the countless people who have actually carried out every part of the overall. The volunteers who have dedicated tens of thousands of hours and worked alongside the SVR's permanent staff to make it happen. Each one of these people has given their heart and soul to this project. Without them, it could not have happened. So, 36 long years since the loco last hauled a passenger service, and now Hagley Hall is back where it should be, on the Seven Valley Railway, working. I'm sure, like me, you're looking forward to its next decade of service, a well, well warm home a warm welcome home to the SVR's flagship locomotive. I'd like now to hand over to one of the SVR's founding fathers. Colum Howe was one of the intrepid group of pioneers that saved the railway in the mid-1960s, and in 1973 he was one of the small team that rescued 4930 from that famous scrapyard in Barry. Just going to pass the microphone down to Colum.
Mr. Chairman, members of the charity, the supporters group, and ladies and gentlemen, the board of directors and staff. Um, it's quite a sort of difficult one for me on a day like this because I remember seeing it not only in its steam decks on BR, but also, um, of course, uh, when it went to Barry. And I'm afraid you can blame me to a certain extent that it came. And um, I loved halls. I rode behind them every single day coming back from school for some years. And um, it really did. It was absolutely marvellous. And I have to say, I used to ride in halls, footplates, more than anything else as a school kid. Um, once I was very annoyed because my sister was asked to go and I had to sit in the carriage. But never mind. Anyhow, to bike to Barry. Um, I mentioned it to old Bill Gillett and Gordon Keeling, who were both Western um, employees, and said, what do you think? They said, yes, go ahead, for God's sake. Anyhow, I did. I told a rather enthusiastic member of the board called Dickie, the late Dickie Dunn, I'm afraid, uh, who's sadly no longer with us, and he said, mm, go ahead. So I did, I went ahead and booked it and that sort of thing. Um, then, unfortunately, the syndicate that was originally going to buy it was nabbed. And by nabbed, I mean Sir Gerald Navarro. <laughs> um, he, unfortunately, took it over and the company was expected to pay for it. But, so we worked, and thanks to Alan Rees, Colin Jenkins, the late John Hill, we managed to get it ready for movement. Alan, the previous general manager, managed to get um, a very good price from Marland House in Cardiff, and up she came, 320 odd quid to move it. Not very much in those days. So we had four, four dead engines plus an LMS tender. I thought it was rather good, and the diesel couldn't pull us around the curve out of Barry Shed. So we thought, oh, we'll give you a push. Well, that's it. Um, anyhow, it came then, we left at midnight, came up here, and it was put into the back siding at Beaudley. Well, one or two of us stopped going on it and cleaned it down, did all the various work that's necessary, and from then, uh, it, uh, we had the boiler out, we detubed it, we got it all ready, then it went to Bridge North for final repair. Um, wonderful. It worked on the railway for ages and ages, um, and it was marvellous. And of course, along came Great Western 150. And when Great Western 150 came along, guess what happened? Hagley Hall and Hinton Manor, another engine that came with, was asked onto the main line. Um, despite odd little things, that uh, ran hot, they both performed extremely well. And it was lovely for those of us who went with it, um, all over down to Plymouth, back up to Bristol, down to Plymouth, back up to Bristol, etc. That sort of thing happened. Anyhow, after that, um, she did excellent work on the Seven Valley. She was in, um, really one of the favourites on the Seven Valley Limited, the dining train we used to have. And um, after that, she eventually um, ran out of steam and was pushed, I suppose, ignominiously of the head shunt at Bridge North, which to me was great sadness. Um, but there we are, waiting its fate. Um, I've heard that one before from the Seven Valley, but I think that's enough said by me, um, and uh, do enjoy your day. Thank you, Colin. That was uh, an excellent reprise of how the locomotive got here and an acknowledgement to some of those that were involved in actually making it happen and bringing it here. Our next speaker has a long association with this locomotive. Keith Hall helped to set up the Friends of the Locomotive 4930 in 1999 and has championed the cause ever since. A highly respected member of our engineering team, Keith's experience has been invaluable in getting Hagley Hall back into steam.
privilege and pleasure of thanking a fair number of people today. I hope I don't run out of time. Okay. But they've helped to make it a very special one. I have been asked to say a few words on behalf of the Friends of Open Open Hagley Hall, and may I thank Colin here for sharing some of his experience with Hagley Hall in the very early days. Now I would like to bring you up to date. You okay there? Yeah. Good. <laughs> with a few... Hey, have you got it right? This is what it's like. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, I'm going to bring you up to date now with a few other records. Shouting at the fire, oh, Keith. Cool. Shouting at the fire. <laughs> sort of volume. They know me too well. <laughs> right, some of the recollections you may not be aware of. Anyway, I'd like to go back to 1984. Where did it? Mr. Ballard over there. Uh, yes, Mr. Ballard over there, sorry. When he's a very young lad, Duncan Ballard, our driver for today, was brought here by his mum and dad to watch the trains. Whether by good fortune or not, I don't really know, but I'm told it was nearly always Hagley Hall at the head of the train. So we assume this is the origin of Duncan's affinity with Hagley Hall. Moving forward a couple of years to 1996, and as Colin said, due to baller issues, Hagley was taken out of commission and stuffed up the hedge under Bridge Hall. But some 10 years later, Duncan Ballard, applied for and gained an engineering apprenticeship at Bridge North. Every day, going to and from work, week after week, month after month, year after year, he would pass his favourite locomotive and see it slowly deteriorating before his eyes. You know where you're going to come, Helen? Uh, but what could he do? At this point, I need to bring in Andy Sweet. There he is, over there. Okay, and the other half of our crew today, and a very long-standing friend of Duncan's. He was having similar thoughts. Together, what could they do? And really, ladies and gentlemen, this is where the vision of the second restoration was born. They approached Paul Fathers and Paul Hobson, then both SVR board members, and are here today. I don't know where the other Paul gone. Wherever you are, Paul. Anyway, uh, that's it. We suggested that Paul Hobson, being a business manager at a well-known high street bank, go along with Duncan and Andy to see Alan Reese, general manager, of the SVR at that time. Is Alan here? No? Okay. Uh, Alan listened attentively and agreed it was an excellent idea. This was a project that could bring other SVR members together, the outcome not being just another working locus for the railway, but Hagley Hall, the flagship locomotive. Alan, with his vast knowledge and experience, gave them plenty of advice and pointers, told them to formulate a business plan and sent them joyfully on their way. In the intervening time, new committee members were recruited, including myself, probably because of my 60 plus years in engineering, and others with their own individual skill sets. A business plan was produced, and through Alan, was passed by the board. Thank you again, Alan. We all, all we had to do now was raise the money. No problem. <laughs> we had a multitude of money-making ideas, including photo charters to frame prints, which from which were taken a commission painting by John Austin, the well-known railway artist. I hope he's here today. John Austin? No? Oh well, we couldn't make it up. But. Also, with steam giving way to diesel power, locomotive fire, firing shovels were virtually non-existent. So we took the plunge, had tooling made, and we produced our own. I think it's fair to say that there are not many preserved railways throughout the country that don't have at least some of our firing shovels. In fact, I have to mention this. In fact, one, actually, one member actually was not here today, unfortunately, he's not too well. He took one of our shovels to Australia, so he, he did go abroad. And over the 20 odd years of sales stands at Kidderminster, several hundred frame prints and shovels are being sold, along with a great variety of Hagley Hall related merchandise. He's brought in valuable funds for the group. And I've now, at the cost of my life, I've got to mention our sales stand over there. Don't I, Tim and Sheena? Okay. Okay, we have a new range for you to spend your money on. Okay, sorry about that. At this point, I must mention our Covenanters, who all came on board in the very early days and have faithfully been, and still are, donating monthly. A huge thank you to them. Also to the Swindon men, along with Petal and Co, and the Wednesday and the Thursday men, I've been told, uh, uh, at Bridge North, and many others who have all given their time, their energy, and their good wishes. To you all, we say many, many thanks. Today, collectively, the, the group as such has raised £145,000. 
and mentioned must be made here and a massive thank you expressed for the support of the two SVR boards, the Charitable Trust, also the grants from the Heritage Lottery Funding, along with other legacies and gifts. We remember too, with humble gratitude, all those who have gifted or unfortunately have since passed on. Without all of the aforementioned, we would not be standing where we are today. To you all, a most sincere thank you. And of course, let us not forget our suppliers and contractors. To them, a big thank you also. My final thank you goes to men and women, especially apprentices, on the leadership of, leadership of Dave Insel and Bridge North, who have all done the most fantastic job of getting Hagley Hall to how we see it today. And who, along with the volunteers, as Mike already said, have racked up actually 50,000 hours of work. So, a thank you to all. We look at it and consider the importance of these youngsters. They are the future of steam preservation on the Seven Valley Railway. And as such, we should encourage them then as much as possible, especially if we're going to retain them and their skills. Okay, we must remember that. So from the very beginning, when a very young Duncan Ballard over there was watching trains here at Kidderminster, and then to two young men over there in their late teens, Duncan and Andy, who had that vision some 23 years ago, and who and right up to the apprentices and the staff of today, we owe you all a huge debt of gratitude. The vision is realised, it is completed. Therefore, will you please all join with me and give them a really resounding round of applause. Thank you. Can I, um, can I now introduce uh, Paul Hobson? Paul is the chair of the Friends of Hagley Hall, and you've heard so much about them from Keith already. My, Paul has some words to share with you, and once Paul has done that, he, together with Mike Neen, will lead the rededication and the unveiling of Hagley Hall's nameplate. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, first, and in his absence, I'd like to say a thank you to Lord Cobham of Hagley Hall, patron of the Friends of 4930 uh, Hagley Hall, for his active support and encouragement over many years. With the loss of our beloved Queen Elizabeth II, his official duties mean that he is unable to undertake the unveiling ceremony today, and in his absence, this honour now befalls to me, alongside Helen Smith, our Managing Director, to perform the unveiling. Could you all now please join us on the platform to see the locomotive in all her glory? Uh, Mike has just but a few not words. Not quite yet. Mike has a, wants to say a few words before we do. It had been our intention that this would all take place in a, a unity, but uh, because of the threat of uh, rain and so forth, we've divided the thing up. So first part of the dedication of this loco here, and then between the three of us, uh, we will continue on the platform with your presence and support. I've been asked to bless this locomotive, and it's a great honour. And as I'm also one of those who hopes in the fullness of time to be rostered to drive it, a duty I'm happy to undertake. Maybe with a blessing it'll get up Highley Bank without slipping. <laughs> so today, here I am in my alternative blues of Hereford Cathedral instead of the usual dirty sort. But what are we doing, you ask? We are partly celebrating the history of this machine. We remember Charles Collett and his team who developed the hall design from the Saint class. We remember the unsung craftsmen of Swindon Works who built her and maintained her over the decades. We remember those who um, Colm has mentioned, those who worked her in traffic, those who brought her back from Barry, those who restored and now restored once again this locomotive. For those of faith, we value creativity as something shared by God and humanity. And we recognise that good human creativity and ingenuity for good are divine gifts. There is something divine about them. And there is a spiritual tradition going right back, especially to St Francis of Assisi, but further back too, of recognising God being praised in good creativity both human and natural. 
Now, it was a Methodist minister, Richard G. Jones, born three years before 4930 rolled out of Swindon, who wrote the words I'm going to use, part of a hymn that picks up on this celebration of creativity in a slightly more modern and urban context than we're used to, but capturing something of today's doings. I'm grateful to Duncan and Andy, who allowed me to borrow their bucket. Jones wrote, God of concrete, God of steel, God of piston and of wheel, God of pylon, God of steam, God of girder and of beam, God of atom, God of mine, all the world of power is thine. Lord of science, Lord of art, God of map and graph and chart, Lord of physics and research, word of Bible, faith of church, Lord of sequence and design, all the world of truth is thine. So here, as we honour those who've gone before in the history of this machine, those who are responsible for it being here in steam before us today, and those who will use and care for it into the coming years, we are pleased to bless it in the name of God for the three Abrahamic world faiths, the ultimate source of creativity. So part one of what I come to do. May the water in this bucket be for us a sign of blessing, both ours and yours, Lord God, Lord God of creation, through our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now we can all move to the platform. Rosemary for remembrance. I bless this locomotive in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. None of my trips slip up highly bank. <laughs> oh. yeah. Thank you. Well, it just remains for us all to enjoy the rest of the day on a very special occasion. And we look forward to talking and having a chat with most of you on the train. So please enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.